Hey guys, Drifter here. I just got back home from visiting the Mississippi Delta, and if you follow me on Twitter, you would know that during this trip, I came to believe that Ozzy was poisoned. Yes, Ozymandias, the little Shiva dog that's in all the videos, may have been poisoned. I took him to the vet, and he's been cleared. He's got a full bill of health, no current toxins in his system, still not doing so great. I'm going to explain that later, but before I explain that, it might make more sense to talk about my grandmother, which is the focus of this video, and living with dementia. It's kind of like a silent disease that's affecting a large portion of our population. It's a very scary and real thing that I wanted to talk to you about today. I'm going to be sharing some personal stories of mine and offering some advice and condolences. The gameplay that you're going to get to see is me using the SA805 with a suppressor and red dot sight. I like the red dot sight a little bit better than the foregrip just because the, the irons are somewhat bulky. Playing on Sovereign Domination, I get off to a slower start but do pick up and do consistently, will say, average throughout the game. I got about a 1.5 KD, 7 captures, about the halfway point, two of my team mates quit so I play 4v6 and we still manage to pull it off that's the point where I struggle good gameplay uh, consistently good gameplay maybe not amazing showing off gameplay but I wanted to play with the SA805 because when the game first came out I thought the SA805 was going to be the best weapon just kind of looking at it it looked really great and I had a great affinity for this weapon but as more of the stats came out I kind of decided to change my mind that maybe this wasn't the best strategy and if I had perhaps had dementia I would have stuck on this one thing I would have fixated with it I would have been uh, continuously SA 805ing until the end of time and not reevaluating myself regardless of what new data came in dementia or Alzheimer's disease or any of the other associated uh, aging illnesses, mental illnesses, are very debilitating and crippling. Uh, number one factor is, of course, being caused by age. The older the person gets, the more uh, their brain has a tendency to not work. In my grandmother's case, it was definitely age. The older she got, the less rationally she was able to think. It also was can be uh, caused by a high-stress lifestyle. In the case of my grandmother, it was my overbearing, occasionally violent, and uh, definitely emotionally abusive grandfather. He was really, really Really, really rough on her and the rest of us and she had to live with him and take care of him for a long time so that constantly wore down and it can also be triggered by a high stress event in the case of my grandfather grandmother it was actually my grandfather's death she was an old woman well into her 80s and when he was in the hospital she spent several honestly I was gonna say days maybe upwards of a week four or five days seven maybe awake con continually straight not sleeping and that kind of stress is really really brutal on an old person it does things to their body and mind that it shouldn't do and she never fully recovered from this sort of thing she has very little short-term memory you know you go visit grandma oh what are you here for and I tell her well you know I just got back from uh, LA and I decided I'd stop by Mississippi and see how you're doing five minutes later oh where are you here for and it's the same thing or you know I tell her a story uh, about my wife or something and then she'll oh how's your wife doing oh you know my wife's doing fine she's doing this she's doing that and then like five minutes later oh how's your wife doing kind of goes around in a circle sometimes about the seventh or eighth time it'll really stick uh, people with dementia Alzheimer's in case my grandmother have difficulty telling time or uh, lengths of time in her case it's uh, the same story over and over and over especially about her dog which is probably the best present that we ever got her not too long after my grandfather died my father and I realized that her mental state wasn't doing very good and we talked about it we came up with a plan to get her a shelter dog give her a pet uh, to talk to somebody to spend time with when you know because we couldn't be there 24 7 something to lug on love on and hug on and pet on and but also something that required a certain schedule maintenance care and you know that was that was a dog and we got her the shelter dog the, the thing was emaciated when we got it it was probably dying and then the shelter uh, and she adored this animal what she didn't know is that it took a huge dump on the porch the very second we brought not the porch uh the entranceway to the back door the second we brought it in the house but we were able to clean it up before she saw it otherwise she never would have had the dog uh, we lied to her and we told her that the shelter was closed we got it over Christmas time and it wouldn't reopen for a week so she had to keep it overnight after about two or three days she really fell in love with the dog she decided to keep it not send it back to the shelter or any of this sort of stuff um, but whatever her dog does when it does something it's really memorable and important for her and she likes to share this with us I mean I'm, I'm kind of the same way I'm a dog person I share you stories with my dog Ozzy and these little cute things but uh, because she's not able to perceive differences in time or remember the things that she's said or done we get to hear the same dog stories over and over and over and over and something that may have happened a month or two months ago to in her mind is really just like a day maybe two days ago it's very very close to her because it was important and, and everything in between wasn't and it just went away no short-term uh, memory there's another common sense I guess it's not a common sense I'm just talking about my grandmother not really dementia too much at this point I got to spend a lot of time with her this weekend I, I visited home so it was a 
uh, somewhat stressful but interesting experience. It was good to see my dad again and help out, but my grandmother is going to need a lot more help soon. You know, limited reasoning abilities. It was many years ago at this point when she was showing the early onset of this. During, I believe it was the 2008 presidential campaign. Maybe it was, was it 2008 or 9? No, it was 2000. It was one of the presidential. It was either the 2012 or 20 uh, to 2008 presidential campaign. The uh, Obama and I believe it was John McCain planned to uh, book several dates on the same city so that they could talk to each other, so they could have open debates on the stage, or maybe it was something like that. But they purposefully overlapped their booking so that they could kind of confront each other on key issues and get sound bites and this sort of stuff. It's a very good strategy for both parties. But uh, my grandmother saw this as a sort of. Um, uh, an improper coalition in government and went on this New World Order Nazi takeover sort of conspiracy theory thing just based on that, you know, pretty much no evidence, but that, that fear, that emotional attachment to things she'd seen in the past overrode all that was pretty sad. A lot of people do that too. And this is a pretty stressful thing for me. It's not, you know, because people, she wasn't always like this. People aren't always like this. You may well have loved ones that are suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's or memory loss or any variety of mental disabilities. And the problem is that these disorders don't make them less of a people. They don't make them less, uh, no emotions, they don't make them robots or cattle or something like that. These are still the people that you know and love and take care of. Here's another another one is uh, schizophrenia. A lot of people think that, oh, schizophrenics are all evil and bad, and that's not the case. They just have um, very difficult pattern recognition problems. They have difficulty with, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to diagnose schizophrenia here, but the thing is they're normal people, but they have other problems. But in my grandmother's case, she was the head of the household. She was a working woman in the 40s. She had a job that other women weren't allowed to have because she did it so well. She was actually richer than her husband, which was kind of funny. Her husband made pretty good money, but my grandmother made a lot more money, and uh, he wasn't always the most responsible, so my grandmother took care of a lot of the bills and the planning. Uh, she paid for my dad's college and pretty decent portion of my college too for that matter of fact uh, and when my mother wasn't around due to circumstances that we're not going to talk about on this video she was my backup mom like my childhood I remember spending more time with my grandmother than I did with my mother my grandmother practically raised me from ages maybe I don't know two or three to about seven so really really close with her and it was really sad to see her mentally fall apart like this slowly 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 the grandmother that I used to know and love and you know go and spend time with just kind of started to disappear and evaporate and get replaced by this crazy woman that's always rambling uh, another sad part of dementia is that as she gets older she gets increasingly paranoid and racist I don't know if this is a process in general that happens in a person's mind that increases their paranoia or racism or if it's an as they get older the filter is removed but basically kind of you know everybody's out to get her now the neighbors are all evil trashy people there's a conspiracy here there's crime there uh, hates airplanes and stuff because you know about a million airplanes crash a day according to her and uh, as soon as the sun goes down all the rapists they're hiding in the bushes are ready to come out pretty racist against black people in general uh, which is kind of funny because when I grew up with her she wasn't really racist hardly any towards black people one of the least racist members of my family but it's the Mississippi Delta it's like where plantations are and where they used to own slaves so it's pretty bad race relations around there and I don't know if this is a process that's happening in her brain or if it's always been this way and just as she gets older the filter gets turned off so I get to hear a uh, pretty good amount of colorful language and theories about who's good and bad based on their skin color and stuff like this. Uh, but now let's get back on track to the story of Ozzy's poisoning. My grandmother, even though she's like this, she takes care of her dog diligently, very well. She feeds her dog. She feeds her dog too much. Her dog's fat, super fat. The dog's probably going to die of dog diabetes of a dog heart attack or something like that. But uh, when I go and visit my hometown, my grandmother is the only person that has a fenced-in yard. She takes care of her dog well, she takes care of my dog well, I just drop the dog off in the yard and she takes care of him. No problems, right? Well, this time on the way home, my dog flipped out in, in the car in the middle of nowhere in Louisiana and just dropped the biggest deuce I've ever seen in my life in the back seat and then took the biggest leak I've ever seen in my life. I'm talking, I have a 20 pound dog and he must have put out like two or three pounds of excrement. It was something the size of an encyclopedia book, like the size of his body, just something that shouldn't have come out of this animal. And we thought maybe he was just backed up, maybe my grandmother just fed him too dadgum much dog food. My grandmother had previously gone on this wild cockamamie theory about how her neighbor was trying to poison her dog with food from his food truck that he couldn't sell on the weekends and I didn't think much of it until then. But unfortunately, uh, about a year ago in the same neighborhood there was a series of 
well, robberies, and what happened is people would go around and poison the dogs about a week or two before, and then they'd break in, kind of get rid of the early warning system. And I remembered this, and I was like, oh my god, my dog's been poisoned. You know, I dropped him off in Granny's yard, and he's been poisoned. So he took him to the emergency vet, burned a couple hundred dollars, unfortunately, came back free of toxins. And uh, through a lot of diagnosis and trial and error and calling grandmother, and she didn't really know what she did or did not feed the dog or if it was cat food, but we finally worked it out. She was basically feeding the dog way, 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 way too much, and I think she was feeding him a little bit of cat food, too. She'd kind of do the thing like, oh, the dog bowl's empty. The dog must be hungry. Feed the dog. Oh, the dog bowl's empty. I must have forgot to feed the dog. Feed the dog. Repeat all weekend, and he was just completely bloated and stuffed full of couple of different kind of foods so that was very unfortunate and dog won't be going back home to spend time with grandmother but the question is how do you live with this how do you live with people like this if you have loved ones in your life how do you deal with it my advice is that you deal with it. kindness patience and reasoning you have to be kind have love in your heart because remember these are the people that loved you that raised you that took care of you that all that did all the good things for you they possibly could in their lives and now it's your turn to do the same thing for them remember uh, once an adult twice a child it's just like that patience you're gonna have to be very patient because you're gonna get to hear and see the same things over and over on repeat on loop they're going to do irrational illogical things but the funny thing is the more irrational they get the more rational and logical you get you're going to have to try to force yourself to think with the crazy person's mind to be able to communicate to explain to them to convince them to do certain things the easy way instead of the hard way there you can see the teammates have already quit and in doing so you'll find that these people are much more cooperative uh, your, your relatives and loved ones are much kinder when you take the time to be nice to them which is kind of logic through on their reason instead of just yelling or being forceful or something like that and this is a topic that I wanted to talk about about because it's kind of like a silent e epidemic in our problem in our in our country it's it has to do with the aging problem as our medical technology improves as we have liver have better health care healthier lifestyles we live longer and longer and longer and a larger portion of our population is going to be affected by any of these uh, Alzheimer's or dementia or any of these you know old age kind of mental disorders and in the fullness of time some of you might be on the, well statistically speaking some of you definitely will be on the chopping block for this so it might be your turn next so next time you see an opportunity to donate uh, to the foundation or any of the or the health care or if you feel frustrated and you want to be mean or spiteful toward a, a relative that has this sort of problem just take your step back take a deep breath and realize that one of these days it's going to be your turn too and try to do a, treat them exactly as you would treat yourself drifter out